Warrior Island. On a mysterious island, grandmasters of martial arts train 16 fighters from around the world. The fighters train and fight for your vote, and you help decide their fate by voting online. Who will become the ultimate island warrior? Where great warriors are discovered and fans have a voice. Welcome to Warrior Island. We are here live at Warrior Island, and tonight, for the first time in history, you, the fans, get a voice and help decide which fighters get to come to Warrior Island and train with the masters and grandmasters of martial arts to compete to become the ultimate island warrior. That's right, fans. For the very first time, you at home get to go onto your social media, watch these fights on your television, Every Saturday, 10 p.m., you're gonna watch the fights. Find your favorite fighter and vote for that fighter up to 10 times on the Warrior Island Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, on the warriorisland.info. Get in there and vote for your favorite fighters because these fighters are gonna fight as hard as they can as warriors to get your vote to come to the island. The 16 winners will travel to the island. They will train with the Grand Masters of Martial Arts. Ron Van Cleef, the Black Dragon. Dan, the Beast Severin, UFC veteran. Um, Orlando Rivera, Henzo Gracie. Kelsey Gracie, Sifu Chow, Sifu Lao. I mean, the list goes on to some of the greatest wow. grandmasters of martial arts and fight coaches in the world. And they're going to fight on the island and train on the island, not in a cage, not in a sound studio, but in the, in the sand, in the water, in the jungle, mountains, caves. It's real warriors who have to fight no matter where they are. But more importantly than the fighting, they have to learn character, to be a good person, learn the, the tiki code, to learn respect, honor, empathy, integrity, all the things that a real world warrior should have. You've been given the ability to fight, to be a warrior, use it for good, not for evil. Yeah, anybody who has followed martial arts for any amount of time will know that the names that Ronan James Jefferson just mentioned are the best in the world. I've known you for a long time, James Jefferson, for well over 10 years. When you told me about the idea for Warrior Island, the first thing that came to mind is this is a winner. Absolutely, we're gonna go, we went to venues all around the world. We found um, some of the great promotions, we found some of the great fighters. We, we filmed these fighters for you. Now you're gonna get to vote, vote for them um, watching the fights tonight. So every Saturday at 10 p.m. you'll tune into the Warrior Island Fight Night and you're gonna watch and get excited about getting these fighters onto the island. So tell us a little bit about what people can actually see when they actually tune into Warrior Island. What's the first thing they'll see as the show develops? Well, on the fight night, you're gonna see uh, you know three, four really good fights every fight night. But then when these fighters get voted on by you to come to the island, they'll arrive by boat. They'll come onto the island, have to show respect to the Grand Masters. Then right out of the get-go, they're gonna be training. They're gonna be dieting. They're gonna be uh, learning the, all this code to be, for the better character. And all along, you as the fans on the on the Warrior Island show are gonna give them more, more things, like maybe more rest, more nutrition, more protein, maybe a massage. If they don't earn your respect, if they're not showing good character, we might wake them up in the middle of the night, give them a little bit less water, less protein. So they have to earn uh, all these different things, kind of like you know some of these movies out there, like uh, Death Race or uh, Hunger Games. So some of that great stuff, but it's going to be real life with real fighters, and not in a cage, not in a soundstage, on a real island and real fighting. You know, you mentioned something earlier that I think is so important to drill down a little bit on, and that is the respect. You know, I've been very fortunate to be commentating fights for almost 20 years now. When I talk to the fighters, and we go aside and we get them to to become. Uh, you know, a little more forthright. They start telling me a little bit about their lives. Martial arts not just helps keep them out of trouble, right, right. keep them out of jail. They actually say it saved my life. The happiness, the moving with the body, it gives Absolutely. them a place to channel their energy yes. in a good form rather than in the bad way. Absolutely, so tonight you're gonna see that. You're gonna see fighters fighting and they're fighting for you. So it might not be the winner you vote for. You may vote for the loser because that person showed better heart, right. better spirit, right. desire, good character, and then they'll develop better fighting skills with the grandmasters that we mentioned. And real quickly, as we get out, the other important element here that has never been done in the history of martial arts content and martial arts television, you, the fan, actually get to have a voice for the first time. This is an interactive show. The fans actually get to tell you who stays and who doesn't stay on the island. It's amazing. So you have to watch the fights tonight. You have to vote. You know, don't wait. 
be in interactive and, and have a voice. So where great warriors are discovered and you, the fan, have a voice. All I can think to do now is go watch some great fights. Can we go see Let's some go. fights? Let's go to the fight. Let's hit it. Warning. The following TV show contains combative sports scenes that some viewers may find disturbing. While we are working with these warriors to teach them the tiki code, it's a process. Viewer discretion is advised. Enjoy, and don't forget to vote for your favorite fighter at warriorisland.info. That's warriorisland.info. The main event, 170 pound title fight competition. First up, we have a 23-year-old who stands at 5 foot 7 and weighs 128 pounds. He has a 1 and 0 record. He represents Vendetta MMA out of Millville, New Jersey in the blue corner, William Elliott. His opponent is a 23-year-old fighter who stands at 5 foot 8 and weighs 129.8 pounds. He is making his debut MMA appearance and he represents Made West Warriors out of Notre Dame, Indiana. In the red corner, Johnny Hollywood! Well, you got the particulars from Mr. Stephen Peacock, William Elliott fighting out of the blue corner on the left-hand side of your screen. Johnny Hollywood Smith fighting out of the red corner on the right-hand side of your screen. Round one. Big kick already from William Elliott. Elliott bringing it. William Elliott. Knees, Muay Thai, punches. Combinations left, right, left, right. Down goes Johnny Hollywood Smith. Smith covering up. Left, right. Elliott, too much. This fight is over. At the 18 second mark. Wow. He finished off his first fight against Jimmy Santiago in Ring of Combat in nine seconds. And this fight just 18 seconds, 27 seconds to knock out his first two opponents in his professional fighting career. This kid is for real. William Elliott, just 23 years old, fighting out of Vendetta MMA, Millville, New Jersey. Wow, 18 seconds, let's take another look. He came out with rockets firing, guns blazing. Left, right, left, down goes Johnny Hollywood Smith. And it was just a matter of time. Smith was just covering up. There's nowhere for him to go. Right, the left, right hits the side of that. That left, right on the chin. The referee had seen enough. Johnny Smith was not intelligently defending himself. Up to the top of the cage goes William Elliott, Millville, New Jersey. Now has a favorite son, and he is MMA fighter William Elliott. Elliott moving to 2-0 and as a pro. He's 3-1. and He's an amateur. You almost have to wonder who he lost to. He lost to Jack Hartenstein. It was a triangle choke in XCC. His only loss as an amateur. He is undefeated as a professional. And if you want to vote for this new young Turk, William Elliott, simply go to warriorisland.com forward slash vote. And you can vote for William right now. But don't forget, you can vote up to 10 times. And on Super Tuesdays, your voting is unlimited. Learn all about us, our comic books, our television shows, our motion pictures, our training, tiki codes, obstacle courses, and more. All right, let's go cage side and make this one official, Stephen Peacock. The winner of this main event, which I'd like to clarify was not a title belt event, but is indeed our main event of the evening. 18 seconds into the first round, the winner by TKO came out of the blue corner, William Elliott. Go vote for your favorite fighter at warriorisland.info.
I'm David Nemiroff, one of the masters at Warrior Island, and I have a task for you. I want you to go to www.warrioridland.com, register and vote for your favorite fighters to come train with me. Are you up for the challenge? Time for our next Warrior Island matchup. Should be a good one. It's in the heavyweight division. Shelton the Grave Digger Graves versus Lorenzo the Dream Killer Hood. There is a good look right there at the Grave Digger. Shelton Graves, Team Top Flight, Team Lloyd Irvin. Here they are facing Lorenzo Hood Strike Fitness out of Chicago. Originally out of Hawaii is Lorenzo Hood. There you see the records three and three for Shelton Graves and 12 and two for Lorenzo Hood. But look at the knockouts. 12 knockouts out of the 12 wins. All knockouts in the first round. So Shelton the Grave Digger Graves is gonna have to implement a perfect game here tonight. He's gonna have some really good jujitsu. We know that as he steps into the cage, fighting out of the blue corner, giving love to the fans here in Philadelphia. Uh, he'll have some good jits, you know, fighting out of Team Lloyd Irvin, a great ground game school in Baltimore, Maryland. And here now, Team Strike Fitness Chicago. Looks like something out of a video game or comic book or pro wrestling with the skeleton uh, bandanas. Now Lorenzo Hood, originally out of Hawaii, six foot three, 26 years old, and it looks absolutely chiseled out of a block of granite. Absolutely jacked. The fans in Philadelphia, you could almost hear an audible gasp when he, when he had his t-shirt taken off. He is a specimen. The big question will be the gas tank. This is a guy who's never gotten out of the first round. Not through any fault of his own in a bad way. He just keeps knocking out his opponents in the first round. So there's a good element to that and a potentially bad element to that. The good element, obviously, you're 12 and two. You got 12 KOs. 
The bad part of it is how many times have you ever been dragged into the deep water? Dragged into the championship rounds. Rounds number four and rounds number five. That's going to be the big test for the dream killer. Fighting out of strike fitness, Chicago. 26 years old, six foot three, probably about 255, depending on what he rehydrated to. Now getting his final equipment safety check here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And shortly, we will be looking at a potential five rounds in the heavyweight division. That's 265 pounds. I highly doubt this one is going to five rounds. All right, let's go cage side to our Warrior Island founder, Sifu James Jefferson. Your feature championship fight of the evening for the heavyweight global proving ground world championship. We have five rounds of five minute fighting. Very good. Are you ready? Let me hear it out there. Come on, this is the big boys. In the blue corner. From Team Top Flight. With three powerful wins. Coming off a win over Joe Stripling at Global Proving Ground. Shelton, the Grave Digger. corner from team top notch coming out of Chicago with 12 wins all by knockout in the red corner Lorenzo Zochamp who Round one. This fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner, Shelton the Grave Digger Graves. And fighting out of the red corner, Lorenzo the Dream Killer Hood. Graves on the left-hand side of your screen, Hood on the right. Hood shoots the Superman punch. Now with double unders. And Graves up against the cage. Looks like a hip toss attempt by Lorenzo Hood. Hood is very explosive. He's got very, very dangerous hands. Shelton, the Grave Digger Graves, most likely going to try to slow him down a little bit. This is exactly what Graves wants. Tie him up a little bit. Try to gas him out. Get him tired. Watch out. Just let him shoot that load. It's a two-minute storm. Going for the tip. Couldn't quite get the tip. Graves now on the top. Good position for Shelton, the Grave Digger Graves. Down again goes Lorenzo Hood. Hood back to his feet again. So a couple of takedowns for Graves, but instantly back to his feet, Lorenzo Hood. Lorenzo has to be careful, though. Graves has his back. Graves is very dangerous. He does have submissions. Fighting, as we mentioned earlier, out of a very good submission school in Team Lloyd Irvin. And, and to the takedown, side control now for the Grave Digger. Shelton Graves now, if he could have scripted out exactly how he'd want this fight to unfold so far, this is it. Nice and close, not taking any damage from the heavy-handed Lorenzo Hood. Hood. Originally out of Hawaii, now looks like he's going for the Kimura. Gonna be very tough off his back though. Knee on belly for Graves, Graves side control. Graves can do this all night long. Graves will have a good gas tank, more knee on the belly. Hood did not like that, but the knee goes back to the belly. It's a, it's a very powerful offensive position for a fighter from side control. Now the knees. Good offense and a good grind tactic here. 
from Shelton Graves. All Shelton has to do is keep busy enough not to get stood up. He did just get a warning from the referee. He's got to keep busy. He cannot just lay and pray like this. And it looks like Lorenzo Hood has no ground game. Nothing off his back whatsoever. Not offering any hips. Not trying to improve position. He is a fish out of water. Ground game getting exposed right now. He's very explosive though, and he's so strong. Very, very dangerous if he can get back to his feet. Two minutes to go here in the opener in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Check out Warrior Island. Check out our Tiki code, you guys. Courage Tiki, Spirit Tiki, Respect Tiki, Loyalty Tiki, Humility, Honor, and Anti-Bullying. Check them all out, warrioridland.com. We'll see what we're about. It's all about martial arts all of the positive aspects it brings. Still more side control and staying just busy enough not to get stood up. If Lorenzo Hood was smart, he'd just hold on to the grave digger. Just, just keep him from posturing up, keep him from doing any damage, and go for the stand-up because he does not have subs. He's got no hips. If you look from, from his waist down, his legs are just lying there. He should be getting his feet on the hips. Either trying to compose a closed guard or to hip out or even shrimp out the back now into north-south position. But he's doing just enough not to lay in prey. You gotta go one way or the other. Freeze everything up or explode out of the bad situation. But when you're going 20%, it's just enough to allow Shelton Graves to stay in top position here. 30 seconds to go in the opener. It's been all Shelton, the Grave Digger Graves. Love how he's got that figure four over the head of Lorenzo Hood. North, south again. Little ground and pound now. Taking it back, gonna try to starch out Hood. He's gonna try to flatten him out. Hood, Hood sniffed it out wisely, got back to his feet, but down again. Wow, Gravedigger just ragdolled Lorenzo Hood down to the canvas. He might be hurt. I think that ragdoll may have hurt Lorenzo Hood. The Dream Killer is very slow to get back to his feet. Almost, almost looks like he was wobbled. And he falls onto his stool, barely peeling himself off the canvas. Here's action from the first round, the suplex. Not quite a suplex, but the attempted suplex still got the job done. There's, there's that standing Kimura, but he didn't have it. Very tough to, to hit those. And this was the majority of the round. It was side control for the Grave Digger, and at the end, dangerously taking the back of Hood. And if that tape had kept rolling, you would have seen him ragdoll Lorenzo Hood down to the canvas and. Hood is either exhausted or he was hurt from that last takedown. Or both, as he got back up to his stool very slowly. All right, time for round two. Here we go. Round two. Five minutes on the clock. Immediately closing the distance. Shelton Graves shooting the double. Down goes Hood, offering up no defense. Hood is exhausted. Shelton Graves able to take down Hood with minimal effort. And now in a dominant side position here. Could take Mount if he wanted it. Not much of a defense being offered up by Hood. Hood is going to have to offer up a defense. If he doesn't, it could get stopped. If the referee sees that he's not intelligently defending himself, if Shelton Graves is able to posture up and let those elbows go, this fight could be over. Hood's got to do something, but it's just got to be so frustrating. Your brain knows what it wants the body to do, and you can't make your arms move, you can't make your legs move, you're taking nasty elbows. Oh, now that, that's an, that's an interesting stop. Now, in my book, that's a little bit early of a stop. I can definitely see what the Dream Killer is upset about there. There was no 
I do not believe there was a verbal submission. There certainly was not a tap out. Lorenzo Hood is understandably upset. Looking at the referee, okay, here's an elbow. I don't see any kind of, so there's no verbal submission there. Certainly not a tap out. And Lorenzo Hood justifiably complaining to the Athletic Commission here in Philly. Very questionable stoppage. Hard to know what was on the referee's mind. In my book, you got to give him a little more of a chance than that. He took one elbow, and he was trying to protect himself. He's, he is just livid with that stoppage. So a controversial ending to what was a good fight nonetheless. A very entertaining fight. Athletic Commission explaining, I can't, that's nothing I can do. The referee's decision is final. I wouldn't mind. I don't think they do it anymore. Back in the day, you could get a sound bite from the referee and find out what was on their mind. All right, when we come back, we're going to make it official. Don't touch that dial. Vote for your favorite fighter at warriorisland.info. Welcome back to Warrior Island, everybody. Let's go cage side to the founder of Warrior Island, Sifu James Jefferson. Of the second round, due to verbal submission, out of the blue corner, the Green Digger, Jonathan A controversial decision. Apparently there was a verbal submission. I was looking very closely at Lorenzo Hood's mouth during that slow motion replay. I could not see him submitting, but it is always easy to second guess the referee. We were not inside the cage. And speaking of inside the cage, that's where Bob Maloney is right now with the champ. I'm gonna dub you tonight the hardest working man in MMA because you have the biggest lunch fail I have ever seen. You bring it to the cage, you go to work, You're a champ! The hardest working man in MMA, the heavyweight GPG champion, the grave digger, Shelton Graves! Outstanding job to the new champion. You can take absolutely nothing away from Shelton, the grave digger Graves, regardless of whether Lorenzo Hood submitted or didn't submit that's how the referee saw it and here's action with what was probably going to be a, a Shelton the Grave Digger Graves win anyway able to get the takedown when he needed to able to ground and pound Lorenzo Hood whenever he wanted to the nasty elbows here the beginning of the end before the drama killer 
and up go the arms of the champion, Shelton the Grave Digger Graves. Go vote for your favorite fighter at warriorisland.info. Warrior Island. Hey fans, it's Ronan here at Warrior Island. I've got a big contest for you. The number one fan that gets the most people to vote, we're gonna give you a special code. The number one fan that gets the most people to vote can win first prize. That's coming to Warrior Island and you get to train with one of the grand masters of martial arts. Hemzo Gracie, Helson Gracie, Ron Van Cleef, Dan the Beast Severed. We have so many grand masters here and you get to pick one. You're gonna train with them. And you're gonna get unbelievable knowledge. We have five second prizes. That's a $100 gift certificate for Xbox or for PlayStation. We have 10 third place prizes, which is all six issues of Warrior Island, the comic book, autographed by the Grandmasters. So you get yourself onto warriorisland.com, you register to vote, and you vote for, the, for all the fighters that you like, and you can do it. And I'll see you at Warrior Island. Hi, I'm the Black Dragon, Ron Van Cleef. Vote for your favorite fighters at warriorisland.com. Be there or be square. Warrior Island is the best event in this world. If you want to see who you really are, if you want to test your medal, come to Warrior Island and train with me, the Black Dragon. This next Warrior Island fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. That's 170 pounds here in New Jersey, getting our first look at Ryan Dixon. Here you see he'll be facing Nashawn Burrell. Burrell at 11 and six, Dixon at 11 and four. Look at that heavy knockouts for Burrell with seven KOs. You can tell it's the classic stand-up guy against the classic ground guy. Dixon with the submission wins, just two KOs and eight submissions. Eight out of 11 of his wins coming by the sub. So you know he's gonna be a ground guy. Never lost at 170. Those four losses were at 155 lightweight. So he's 11-0 as a welterweight. Now we see his opponent, 25-year-old Deshaun Burrell, fighting out of Philadelphia, Team Henzo Gracie. The fight firm, Team Henzo Gracie. He is a striker. And uh, his recent losses, according to him, were due to too much thinking. He needs to get back to his explosive roots. He wants to be relaxed, he needs to find that aggressive nature that got him all the early wins in his career. Uh, very strong, very explosive, has both power and speed. Definitely looking to relax here in the cage tonight and not overthink it. Let his hands go, get back to his roots. Get his final equipment check here. Warrior Island, both of these welterweights vying for your vote here tonight to make it onto the island and get trained by some of the best masters and sifus in the world. We see neither one of the welterweights making eye contact. Let's go cage side to our founder, Sifu James Jefferson. International World Championship title match with Canada versus USA. Three rounds of five minutes. Fighting with referee Liam Perrigan. Out of the blue corner from Team Jocelyn, 
with a record of 10 wins and four losses. Out of Hamilton, Ontario, Ryan Dixon! And out of the red corner, representing Team Henzo Gracie, Philadelphia, UFC Bellator veteran, with 11 wins and five losses, Nishan Burrell! Round one. Here we go, scheduled for three five minute rounds at 170. On the left hand side of your screen, Nishan Burrell in the red and black board shorts. And going down now, shooting for the single is Ryan Dixon getting stuffed nicely there by Nashawn Burrell. Good indication there early for Burrell, letting that left hook go. Good combinations for Burrell. Burrell's the bigger of the two fighters. Could, could probably fight at middleweight if he wanted to. Uh, just a big dude, got strong hands and Ryan Dixon's not going to want to stand with him long. I can tell you that much. It's, it's, oh, clipped him right there already. Ryan in a little bit of trouble. Beautiful right hook by Nashawn Burrell. Clipping Ryan Dixon. Dixon feeling that one for sure. So one minute ticked away. It's the classic ground guy versus the classic stand-up guy and the classic Canada versus the classic USA. All a classic tonight here at Warrior Island. Stalking Dixon now is Nashawn Burrell fighting out of Philadelphia. Team Henzo Gracie and the fight firm. Cutting off the cage. Another right hand. Another two right hands now have gotten through. Dixon can take a punch. That's three brutal right hands that have gotten through. Now Dixon finally closing the distance. This is where Dixon wants to be and with the takedown and time to work top position. Much better situation for Ryan Dixon. Dixon now looking to clear that right leg, go to full mount. Turning into Dixon is Burrell. Nice job getting the knees on hips. And good defense here from Nashawn Burrell. But side control now for Dixon, who it looks like he may be leaking. Hard to tell where that cut is from our angle. I think it might be over the right eye or, or the right eye socket. Um, doesn't look like it's bleeding profusely. Does not look like it's going into the eye socket. Oh, nice elbow, man. Boy, I'll tell you, from close distance, Nashawn Burrell is very dangerous. And wisely <laughs> separating is Dixon. Dixon trying to get a little something something going here. He's, he's got about two and a half minutes here to try to take this round back. It's been pretty much all Burrell. Burrell's been able to close when he's needed to and get out of dodge. What Dixon wants to do during the close is to clinch. You see how he gets in? Combinations, nice straight punches down the pipe. Stuffing the takedown is Burrell. He is two for three in stuffs. Now looking to stuff this single leg attempt from Ryan Dixon here at Warrior Island in New Jersey. Both of these welterweights vying to join the other great fighters who will be on the island. Learn about us. Learn how to vote. Learn about our Tiki code. Artists, shop for us. Check out our comic books. Our MMA masters, all at warriorisland.info. Nice left hand. Oh, and just missing the kick. Burrell feeling it now. Burrell really able to implement his game plan for the majority of this opening round. The outside leg kick was working earlier before Dixon. Dixon didn't close the distance on that one though, but that's a great move, taking out the lead leg of Burrell if he can. That's the leg that Burrell's planting on. You take that lead leg out of the equation. It's gonna be a lot harder for Burrell to plant and let those heavy hands go. 
See, he's working that lead leg, that left leg of Pharrell smartly. Good strategy there by Dixon, who can take a shot. He's hard as nails. He made three big right hands in the first round. 30 seconds to go here in the opener. Great scrap already at 170. Another outside leg kick from Dixon. He could, he could actually double the output, and that still wouldn't be enough. He's really got to work. And now you can see it's get, paying off a little bit of dividends there. You see Burrell changing over to southpaw. He did not like, and now he's letting the hands go again. Shooting the single. Beautiful time to get a takedown if he can. Couldn't quite get the takedown. He needed about another 10 seconds, but I don't think it would have been enough to take the round. As we see the damage now under the right eye of Ryan Dixon. Ryan Dixon also looks like he may be cut over or to the left-hand side of the left eye into the right-hand side of the left eye as well. And here's the damage. See that right scoops up. Yeah, and there's that left elbow. He scooped up the heel, and it could have been that kick as well. Shin to face. Shin's going to win every time. Beautiful right hand. Could have happened on any one of these strikes. But just you see, it really was a striking clinic put on by Nashawn Burrell. And they're going to have to go back to the drawing board over at Team Jocelyn. Ryan Dixon coached by Jeff Jocelyn, longtime UFC vet out of Canada. He also trains at Alliance BJJ. 11 and four as an MMA fighter and 11 and zero as a welterweight. It's way more the submission artist than Burrell. He's got eight submissions and only two KOs out of those 15 fights. Here we go, round number two. Round two. Just tuned in, you're watching Warrior Island. I'm Jordan J. Adams, your Warrior Island commentator. This is a welterweight matchup on the left-hand side of your screen, Nashawn Burrell in the red and black. And on the right-hand side of your screen, Ryan Dixon in the black and white. Another shin, this time he wobbles Dixon. Dixon's in big time trouble. He was hurt by the shin. Again, the shin in the face, and this fight is over! Over! In the first minute of round number two, Nashawn Burrell moves to 12 and six as a welterweight. This is what Nashawn Burrell wanted to do. He wanted to let his hands go, he wanted to relax in there. You can see he's happy with what happened here tonight. He was able to implement his game plan Gives a high five to Warrior Island founder, seafood James Jefferson. It was exactly what Nashawn Burrell needed to do. He needed to stuff the takedowns. He did not want this to be a ground game type of fight. He wanted this to be all stand up. And with the exception of a couple of takedowns, he was able to keep this fight on his feet. And even when he was taken down, he was able to get to his feet quickly. Let's go cage side to Seafood James Jefferson and make this one official. Seconds into the second round, we have a referee stoppage by TKO. And the new World Champion National Champion out of the world corner, Nishan Burrell. Time for some cage side banter with Mr. Bob Maloney. Sean Burrell, what a barrage of strikes there. You opened them up in the first round. We didn't know if you were going to continue because you took some damage to the eye. Wonderful execution of the striking game. Tell us how it feels right here to have that strap around your belt. It feels good, man. I'm a little disappointed I couldn't make weight, but I mean, I want to still come out here and put on the show for the fans, man. Thank y'all for coming out. Well, you did put on a great show. You're a Philly fighter. You come out, you leave it all in the cage. You came out, you went you went for the knockout, gave everybody here a, a big jolt of excitement. Congratulations again on the championship. We look forward to Nashawn Burrell coming back to the cage, doing the same thing, leaving the cage with another victory. Thank you, man. Be the hype, man. <laughs> Burrell! 
action from the second round. And it was shin to face that really made the difference in this fight. That was the shin that wobbled Dixon. You can see he's very shaky on his feet. It's like standing, trying to stand on a surfboard in a, you know, standing on a surfboard in brutal choppy water. Referee had seen enough, and the belt goes around Nashawn Burrell's waist. Vote for your favorite fighter at warriorisland.info. Ronan here at Warrior Island. I've got a big contest for you. The number one fan that gets the most people to vote, we're gonna give you a special code. The number one fan that gets the most people to vote can win first prize. That's coming to Warrior Island and you get to train with one of the grand masters of martial arts. Hemzo Gracie, Helsing Gracie, Ron Van Cleef, Dan the Beast Severed. We have so many grand masters here and you get to pick one. You're gonna train with them. And you're gonna get unbelievable knowledge. We have five second prizes. That's $100 gift certificate for Xbox. Or for PlayStation. We have 10 third place prizes, which is all six issues of Warrior Island, the comic book, autographed by the Grandmasters. So you get yourself onto warriorisland.com, you register to vote, and you vote for the, all the fighters that you like, and you can do it. And I'll see you at Warrior Island. Oh, what a great night of fights. You know, some real unexpected turnouts there, but everything was fantastic. And what character and heart these athletes showed out there tonight. Unbelievable. You know, sometimes you go into a fight and you look at, you know, check out these fighters. You got your favorite fighter. You think one's going to win, but it doesn't end up that way because sometimes, you know, you, know, you get a rear naked choke or you get a knockout. You just don't <laughs> expect it. But, you know, what you do, though, you see these fighters, you see that they have more respect. Yes. We, we search out. Yes the promotions around the world. We search out the fighters, the coaches, the dojos, of, of people that show the respect, the honor, the empathy of what it would take to come to Warrior Island, fighting for your voted home to get that vote, and then to go to Warrior Island, train with these masters, and that's what this is all about. So this week, this week you watch these fighters, you go vote for them. Hey, next week you might see another fighter, but it's all about you, the fans, and the, the character of these fighters in the cage to bring them to Warrior Island. Yeah, you bring up a really good point there, James. For the fans at home who are watching and getting ready to vote, you don't necessarily have to vote for the winner of the fight. There may have been an athlete in there tonight that showed so much heart, showed so much character, that you actually want to vote for them, even though they may not have won their particular fight. Just based on their character, you're compelled to vote for them. It's a great point, you know, and, and Jay, that's why we have the Tiki Code. 
you know, the, the, the code of honor, the Tiki code of respect, the Tiki code of integrity, empathy. You know, just because you were born with this ability to be a great warrior fighter doesn't mean you knock somebody down. It actually shows more power to pick somebody up when they're down. And you'll notice that, that we kind of gravitate towards those kinds of fighters, those warriors. And that's what you should look for. Someone that stands out as a, as a good character person or needs development and work. And that's what they do. You see, you're going to vote up to 10 times on all the social media. All right, well, to do that, you're going to want to go to warriorisland.info and he's going to let you vote 10 times. So take advantage of that. Get to that website right now. So Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube. Vote, vote, vote. We want you to have a voice up to 10 times per device. All right, what can we look forward to next week on Warrior Island? You know what? This has been a, a great night of fights, but, you know, we have... We have won every week, so tune in every week. You have new fighters, new new uh, venues around the world, whether it's Portugal, whether it's London, whether it's different spots in the United States. You know, we would search the world and globe for this. And here's the other thing. You don't just have to vote for fighters in these cages. You can have fighters on YouTube that aren't even in the cage that you can vote for. So even the fighters at home and promoters at home, you can upload videos and fights to us from around the world. And we have wild cards where you can actually make the island and not even be in the cage. Oh my God, amazing. Well, next week, you're not going to want to miss it. I want to personally thank you, Ronan James Jefferson, for putting this together. It's a great vision. You're helping the world. You're helping all these athletes. Thank you so much. I can't wait for next week. You're a great partner, man. <laughs> not once did I try to have to defend any uh, kicks or punches or chokes <laughs> from Mr. Jay Adams, one of the best in the world in decades of commentating. But great to have him here. He's our Jeff Probst. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time on Warrior Island. Oh.